Hello everybody, welcome along. My name is Benjamin Bloom. This is the Benjamin Bloom Football Channel. Please leave your bias at the door and join me as we discuss a heroic win for Leeds at Manchester City. Leeds, stun, City. Use whatever word you want. I think I'm going to go with heroic given the nature that Leeds won this game with the entire second half being played with 10 men after Liam Cooper was red carded but a signature victory now for Leeds to add to their first season in the Premier League I was only saying the other day on one of the dearly departed shows oh what Leeds have done really well this season is they've really dominated those teams down at the bottom to raise themselves up in the middle well here's an away victory against the champions elect with 10 men for half the game so a brilliant one for Leeds to add to the arguments to um, their viability as a Premier League force as time goes on here under Marcelo Bielsa. And there's just something there when they play Man City. It was 1-1 earlier in the season, wasn't it? Great game. Um, I was doing the Saturday Super Stream while this was all unfolding. I recorded it on BT Sport and I've just had a look just now. Um, so we're going to go over the key um, parts of this game and I'll give my views. Um, brilliant, brilliant stuff. It would normally be dearly departed day tomorrow, but um, I thought we couldn't wait for this one. Here are the teams. So, uh, Melier in goal for Leeds. Alioski, Cooper, Lorente and Ailing. It's weird how the team that ends the season is never the team that starts the season. I just didn't think Alioski would end up being the left back or too emotional, too, too erratic. Can you trust him? Blah, blah, blah. Well, he's in there. Um, and he's in there through about three degrees of separation with Dallas not being there. And that means someone else is not in central midfield. But it is what it is. And um, there he is, Alioski, um, in the side. Uh, Phillips, Costa, Roberts, Dallas, Rafinha. Obviously, Costa is in. Harrison can't play. He's on loan from Manchester City. Stuart Dallas and Tyler Roberts. Um, I could have sworn it would have been click at the start of the season. And then when they signed Rodrigo, it would be click and Rodrigo. <laughs> it's in the big win of the season here. It's uh, Dallas and Roberts and a, a super performance by Stuart Dallas. I was having a chat on Patreon about Leeds Player of the Year. And I was saying, oh, well, Bamford scored all of these goals. And um, the, the Leeds fan I was chatting to was um, advocating for Dallas. And I'm sure yesterday's done him no harm whatsoever. Rafinha... Uh, Bamford obviously up top. Manchester City, uh, Edison, Cancelo, Stones, a rare game for Ake who came in from the Championship and Bournemouth, Mendy, uh, Zinchenko, Fernandinho, Silva, Torres, Jesus and Sterling. Um, look, we elephant and no De Bruyne, um, no Foden but still plenty of quality in that team. Sterling, Jesus, Torres, um, Silver, England's John Stones, Edison in goal. Cancelo's been brilliant this season. So this is not a reserve team, even if Kevin De Bruyne and Phil Foden are not starting. And here we go. And here's the opening goal on a great day for Stuart Dallas. It's a lovely goal as well. Um, slid across to him by Bamford, you can see in the picture there. Edge of the box and... We know the score here, don't we? Uh, can you get your head over the ball, get your knee over the ball, hit it as hard and low, as far into the corner as you can, and you've got a chance. Well, um, it's in off the right-hand post. I think Ake goes to charge it down, and um, maybe Edison doesn't see it too late. But frankly, even if he sees it early, it's going in off the post, so he's going to do well uh, to get across there. And Leeds have the lead... Um, what minute was that? 42 towards the end of the first half. But here comes a red card for Liam Cooper. Now, um, I saw Liam Cooper's tweet about this last night. And Liam Cooper's not, um, he didn't seem to be whining. He seemed to be, um, you know, saying, well done, lads, in my absence. And then I read the replies. Now, I was a little bit surprised. I can understand Leeds fans being behind their captain, etc. And let's just get this out of the way. Um, I can also understand a bit of irritation because there was a tackle by George Bulldog on Tyler Roberts in the last Leeds game, um, which literally went unpunished, didn't it? 
Um, so yes, I can understand um, Leeds fans wanting to be A, behind their captain, and B, perhaps a bit annoyed that, um, well, if this is a red card, um, then shouldn't that be a red card? So I accept those two positions, but, and we've read the laws many, many times, this was always going to be a red card, wasn't it? When it, Especially when VAR intervenes, you know it's done. Uh, serious foul play there. There is the threshold. A tackle or challenge that endangers the safety of an opponent or uses excessive force or brutality it must be sanctioned as serious foul play. Um, I did see, hashtag he got the ball. Hashtag I got the ball, ref. But look, he's following through there. Um, smashes Jesus um, in the right knee. Um, agree with the wording, agree with the interpretation in 2021 or not. That's up to you, but you knew it was going to be a red card. Um, fortunately for you Leeds fans, it didn't matter because miraculously, also a third thing to add in terms of Leeds fans' frustration, I can imagine feeling very, very annoyed, especially um, given... You're away at Man City. You've got the lead. You think, oh, this could be a glorious win. There goes the red card. And you think, oh, damn. That's that done. But look, um, let's put my cards on the table. 2021, I think that was always going to get given as a red card, given the um, the threshold. But yes, I do understand. Um, there may have been certain other decisions in certain games that don't stack up. But taking this one in isolation, I think um, it is what it is but feel free to get your views in via the comments now interesting here because pat bamford gets taken off um and i was thinking about the bielsa strategy um as it pertains to 10 men and i suppose um it, it does actually work quite well because we always hear about this um sort of three blocks of three and, and one striker that you can sometimes end up with that extra sort of layer in the pitch and, you know, you can get groups of three strung across the pitch. Um, so if you take Pat Bamford out of the top of that, I guess it leaves Tyler Roberts as, as the focal point. And remember, Leeds is all about creating overloads in small areas of the pitch. Um, so they're fit, they're very well coached, they're, they're very good at playing out, um, probably going to be dominated and pressed in at this point by a Pep Guardiola team. But, you know, they're never going to change their tactics and just um, two rows of four and one striker, never going to do that. But obviously some defending is now going to need to be done against presumably England's champions um, pretty soon. And there we go. There is the equaliser. Um, it came on 76, so they lasted a fair while here, Bernardo Silva slips that in. Lovely finish by Ferran Torres. Um, by the way, plenty of subs have gone by this point. Um, uh, Foden, is he in yet? Uh, yeah, Foden has literally come on a couple of minutes before. So has Gundogan, who scored a ton of goals as well. Um, interestingly, not Mares De Bruyne or Rodri, who's <laughs> got so many good players on the bench. Manchester City, but they get the equaliser. Robin Cock had come in for Leeds for Tyler Roberts on 63. So um, any sense of strikers on the pitch, um, Bamford, I mean, call Roberts a striker, kind of halfway between a central midfielder and a striker, especially how Bielsa deploys him. Um, but sensationally, um, in the... 90th minute, actually it was in stoppage time, yeah, 91 minutes and Manchester City having, well, we'll look at the numbers, but having forced um, well over nearly 30 shots. In fact, here comes a Leeds breakaway. Now, prior to this as well, Rafinha had um, got in on the right-hand side. So we're just talking about having no strikers, essentially, with Bamford and Roberts both having gone off. But if the plan is to absorb and, you know, out quickly and get those wide players swung behind, it did work, didn't it? Because uh, Rafinha got in just a bit of a heavy touch. Good goalkeeping by Edison to stop that. But here comes the winning goal. And we do have to mention Alioski again, because it's Alioski, the left back, who slips this one through, kind of with the outside of his foot to split the defence. And Dallas 
just brilliant. Um, I think, is it stones he's with? Just strong enough, edge of the box. I have to say, from Edison's point of view here, um, we do need to level a little bit of criticism because either come to the edge of the box and narrow the angle or head back and make it a more difficult shot. He's in no man's land, but boy, does Dallas exploit it brilliantly for his second goal. And um, do check out the LUTV commentary because Tony DiRigo has a Gary Neville moment in there, which is uh, quite joyous. Whoever you support, I'd recommend that. Um, now, we always get a lot of comments on these videos. Oh, you didn't mention. You didn't mention. There's only so much I can mention. Yes, I'm aware of uh, Fernandinho's uh, tackle on Rafinha after it went 2-1, didn't it? That did come after the goal. Um, I remember seeing that actually at the time on the Superstream. Uh, not a good one, was it? Let's just say, not a good one. And um, uh, yes, probably an orange card, that one. But let's get into who cares, Leeds fans, frankly, because the win came absolutely brilliant stuff. 10 men from half-time, two goals from Dallas. And... <laughs> Just talk about Dallas as well. Uh, sort of arrives at Leeds as a wide player. Where had he been? Brentford? I can't even remember where he was before here. Uh, Pre-Bielsa. And then Bielsa started to build his team. And likes of me from the outside are like, oh, he probably won't end up using Dallas. He's probably going to get some South American guys or what have you. And then you have this thing of, oh, Doug Dallas is incredibly... Useful, and then Douglas isn't working out at left back, and um, I'm going to use Dallas at left back. And I've been to many, many Leeds games when just covering the Championship and seeing them, and I've seen him play left back, right back, central midfield. I've seen him drop into um, Phillips' position. I've seen him play both sides, and I've also seen him pick up that weird position when Bielsa has like three and then three. So you kind of inside deep wide midfield I don't even know what you'd call it but he's basically like the most versatile guy and just the best exponent um maybe as well as um Bamford and Phillips I guess uh Bielsa ball that that you'll get what what a brilliant story here and a double against the lead leader so big tip of the cap to Stuart Dallas big tip of the cap to Bielsa because um, uh, I'm going to do a name drop here. I remember talking to Gerhard Struber, the old Barnsley manager, in a press conference about this. And I said to him, I said, we see so often in English football, 4-4, uh, four, four, um, two banks of four with 10 men and just sit and have an out ball. And to end up with essentially the threat just being Costa and um, Rafinha trying to get in behind, he's absolutely nailed this, hasn't he? Let's have a look at the numbers. As you can imagine... Look at that from Leeds. Efficient. Two shots, two shots on targets, two goals. Um, look, I'm sure many Leeds fans will respond saying, we've seen Leeds be on the other side of this plenty of times, especially in the Championship and especially in away games in, in London. It feels like this is the pattern. Look at the shot map as well there. But what I will say, here's some stats for you to look at. Only two big chances for Manchester City and 11 shots blocked as well by Leeds. 11 shots off target. So, okay, you can look at the big headline of 29 shots to two in this game, but you have to have some good defending on the one side and some good finishing on the other. And, God, some concentration and some uh, testicular fortitude to um, play this second half in the way that Leeds managed to. Absolutely brilliant stuff. A uh, great win for the dearly departed as well. And... Um, uh, Villa, no, Villa did play yesterday, didn't they? They lost at Liverpool. So, yes, Villa have got a game in hand. But Leeds move um, as our uh, Premier Dearly Departed team now. They move above Villa, 45 points, ninth place. The key number for me is look down to Wolves now, 38. So, seven clear of Wolves. I'm thinking about a top half finish here for Leeds. Obviously, Villa are creaking a little bit without Grealish, whereas Leeds have now got 10 points from four. Obviously, Arsenal being what they are, there's always the chance they could put a winning run together. And I think they've got Sheffield United next, so they may um, they may jump up above Leeds by the time uh, that game has taken place. I think that's tonight, isn't it? But 
Um, just great stuff. 45 points from Leeds from 31 games. So seven to go. Let's um, give them give them 1.5 points from the last seven uh, per game. That's still another 10. Mid 50s, possibly. Great stuff. Great stuff. It's been a great season for Leeds, um, hasn't it? And nice to add this signature win. I know we've talked a lot about, um, again, I try and remember the results off the top of my head. They definitely doubled Sheffield United. They hammered West Brom, didn't they? Doubled Fulham, doubled Newcastle. Um, I can't remember how they went against Brighton. I know they lost at home, didn't they? Um, they beat Burnley at home as well, didn't they? So Leeds have picked up, <clears throat> which you have to, dominated those bottom teams. But to get this away win now at Manchester City is just tremendous. So we've gone a little bit early. Um, I won't include this in the um, Dearly Departed review. I'll have a, a little pricey of it. But um, I just wanted to go early because it does feel like a big, magnificent win. And we'll cover West Brom and... Uh, God, who are they playing? Southampton? Uh, tomorrow night at six. Get your comments in. I'm going with heroic on a heroic and heroic. A heroic? I don't know what the word is. Um, or the is it preposition or is that part of the word? Who knows? Who cares? It was a great win by Leeds. Get your views in the comments. As ever, you can support on Patreon. Hit subscribe, ring the bell, all of that good stuff. And tip of the cap: Manchester City one, Leeds with ten men for the entire second half. Two, um, take a bell, Mr. Bielsa. Over and out. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. To see more videos from this channel, hit the subscribe button and to be notified every time we upload. Ring the bell for those notifications to come through on your device. If you really want to support the channel and me as a content creator, I will be eternally grateful if you head over to the merch store and grab something or support over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Benjamin Bloom. Thank you for your time. Go and watch another video.